Hi there. We're here to talk about the Hachinka Mini Circular Saw. Now, before we get into that, into this tool, let's just talk about the idea of mini circular saws to begin with. When I first heard about these, I thought, okay, is somebody trying to make a what? I thought maybe it's something for women to use on craft projects. And matter of fact, both my mother and my wife said the exact same thing. But it's not advertised that way. It's advertised as a real tool, something we'd use for home repair, something we'd use, a contractor might use. And so I had to take a second look at it and think about maybe I needed to change the way I've been thinking about circular saws. Way back when I was in the construction trades, I was a contractor, and I'm used to a seven and a quarter inch circular saw. You know, plug it in, lots of power, um, even worm drive saws, okay? This obviously isn't in the same category, but then again, it's not intended to be in the same category, and we've got to keep that in mind. When I showed up at my first construction job and I had a six and a half inch circular saw, I felt like a locker room who was measured and found to come up short. It didn't take me long to buy a bigger circular saw. Nevertheless, is the question for me was, is there a place for a saw like this? Well, if you think about it, you know, if you're gonna frame a house, you're cutting two by fours, no, there's no place for something like this. The maximum depth of cut of this saw is 25 millimeters. That's right about at an inch. Uh, and a two by four is one and a half inches thick. So there's no way you're gonna cut two by fours with a saw like this. But there's a lot of other things you can cut in 25 millimeters. You can cut one bys. You can cut trim, you can cut plastic pipe, copper pipe, you can cut plywood. There's an awful lot of materials that are used on a construction site that can be cut by something a lot smaller than a seven and a quarter inch circular saw. And the really great thing about it is this saw is a lot lighter. Let's just deal with that right now, okay? It weighs out at four pounds, four ounces, okay? Now here's my old standby circular saw and we're at 11 pounds, six ounces, almost three times the weight. You know, if I've got to control something, if I've got to make an accurate cut and I need to be able to control the saw accurately, that's going to be a whole lot easier to control than that. So that's a real benefit and that's something to consider when we're looking at these saws. Why use more of a tool than you need to or why use a heavier tool than you need to? Especially if you're talking about cuts in tight places, maybe an overhead cut. Now, I can't imagine cutting something on the ceiling or, or even like a saw foot above cabinetry with a, with a, a full-size circular saw. But if I can do that with a saw like this, yeah, that's great. That four pounds, four ounces isn't hard to hold, isn't hard to control. So let's take a look at the kit. This is what comes in the kit. It comes in a nice carrying case. I always like carrying cases. I may never use them, but there's always those times when you need to take a tool somewhere. Oh, I need to go over to my mother-in-law's and make a repair. And look, I can get away with using the small saw. I don't have to take the big saw. Great, put it in the carrying case, let's go. Okay, I like carrying cases. In the carrying case, you of course have the saw. You have a fence for rip cutting, for like making strips. Works out nicely. An Allen wrench for changing the blades. It comes with three blades. It's got one in, already installed in the tool. There are three and three eighths inch blades. And the one that's installed in here is a carbide tip blade. And it comes with a high speed steel blade. And it comes with a diamond dust blade, okay? So on the blades, it talks about what they're intended to be used for. The one that's in here, that's the carbide tip blade, it says, soft woods and plastic. Well, you can cut through PVC plastic with just about anything, so it's no big deal, right? This one, the high-speed steel says on it, it says wood and soft metal. Now that surprised me. I would think if you were to use a blade for cutting soft metal, it'd be the carbide tip one, but they're saying to use this one for it, okay? And then the diamond one is for ceramic tile. Now that surprised me a bit too, that they would even try to do the ceramic tile. The other thing that comes with it is a adapter for dust collection. There's a port right here on the side of the blade guard and this will lock on there and you take this and connect it to your shop vac to collect the dust. We're going to see how that works in just a moment. We'll test that out. Let's look at the saw itself. Now I have to admit the saw is a little dusty. That's because I've been testing it. All right, I've been trying it out. This is a blade lock so that you can change blades. Okay. The saw Looks like it's designed to be used this way, but in actuality, it's designed to be used with that a 45 degree angle, okay? Or that's maybe about a 35 degree angle. That's a real difference. So it's rather ergonomic, although it doesn't look like it when it's sitting. The shoe is stamped metal, but it's fairly heavy stamped metal. It looks like it's solid and that's gonna bend. Really, really good blade guard on here. You would have to work really hard to get your fingers in there by accident. I've never had an accident with a circular saw, but I've known people that have. And a normal circular saw blade guard does not fully close the blade or enclose the blade when the blade is idle or when you release the trigger and the blade is spinning down. This one, you pick this up off your workpiece, there we go, and it just snaps back into place. 
The blade is very, very safe. All right. Depth of adjustment right here is really easy to do. And this depth of adjustment is adjusting how far the shoe is going to collapse up into the saw when you're making your cut. Okay. It, it's scaled from 5 to 25 millimeters. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the saw is that it is metric. Okay. Yeah, the world's going metric. We just got to get used to it, folks. If you're younger than me, you're probably more used to it than I am, but I'm working on it. So easy depth of adjustment, uh, very easy depth of adjustment, actually. Now, there's two triggers on here. There's the trigger on the top and the trigger on the bottom. The trigger on the top is actually the blade guard release that allows, I guess, the shoe to go down and expose the blade, okay? The one on the bottom here is the operating trigger, and it's index for two fingers. I'll tell you from experience, don't get your index finger in that back one because if you're trying to hold that, you get it in my right hand here, with that back one and your thumb on this release, uh, it's going to be hard to hold. You're going to end up letting up the tension on the, the power trigger there and it's probably going to stop running. So you need both fingers on there. That's uh, one of those lessons learned the hard way, okay? Rugged looking, apparently made from uh, a lot of cast aluminum here. The housing is nicely covered in rubber, heavy rubber. Gives you a really good grip on the tool. You got a really solid grip. So between the lightweight and the really good grip, it's very easy to use it in awkward places. And I like that about the tool. So, but the real question is, how does it cut, right? All right, I said the saw really wasn't made for cutting two by four. So first thing I'm gonna try and cut is a two by four. Now, granted, I know the blade isn't going to go through the wood. What I want to know is if the saw bogs down in the wood. And it didn't. It cut through that like it was made for. Although I have to say, I did get some sawdust on here. Let's try that again. I'll go ahead and put it on the dust collector. It just plugs into the shop vac and to a port on the side of the saw here and we'll see how good the job that does. Well that did a pretty good job too. It was able to get through there, it cut through it. Uh, yeah there's still some little sawdust around but it picked up most of the sawdust and that's really all you can expect at least as far as I think from any dust collection system. So it's doing a good job. All right, so it didn't make it to the two by four, but we didn't expect it to anyway. So I really think of this more of a plywood cutting saw. I don't know if I'm right, but that's what I think. So let's try cutting some ply with it. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fence on here. Fence slides in really nice and easy. Like the depth cut, it is calibrated in metric. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a very clear line here, right in line with the blade that you can set it for, and it can be set from either side. And I, what I've got here is a piece of three quarter inch, I think it's BC ply, construction plywood. And uh, it's about 36 inches long. Now I tried cutting something just like this with a cordless circular saw, six and a half inch cordless circular saw the other day. And to be honest with you, it really had some trouble getting through it. It got through it, but it stopped a couple times. So that's a pretty good comparison, I'd say. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the dust collection. That worked pretty good for us. And what I'm really looking for is to see it, if it bogs down cutting through this plywood. Okay, the two times it seemed to bog down wasn't the saw's fault. What it was is that my fingers were releasing the trigger, okay? So it's a little bit tricky for me, and it's just, I think because I'm not used to it, to hold this at this angle and hold, maintain that trigger. So I've got my thumb here pushing forward this guard release, although it doesn't have to push it forward once I've gone ahead and, and released it, and my index and middle finger pulling this back. I think this would be a lot easier to do if the board that I'm cutting was lower. I'm not at a really great angle here, so I'm not gonna hold that against the saw. I think that was me and not the saw. But as you can see, it cut through that pretty well. Once we discount the two places where my finger slipped, it cut right through that three quarter inch plywood and it did it without any real problem. So, okay, so it does wood all right. I would definitely say it does wood all right. Now they claim that this saw will do more than wood. They say it'll do aluminum or the soft metals. Let me be more specific, soft metals. And they also say that it'll do plastic 
and that it will do ceramic tile. Well, okay, so plastic is easy, right? I don't think there's any issue on that. I'm not even gonna bother testing for that. But what about metal with a saw this size? And what's even odder about that is they say you're supposed to cut the metal with the blade that doesn't have the carbide piece. So let's give this a try. We need to change the blade out and uh, the blades are marked for what kind of material they're supposed to be used with. And there's a, a blade lock on the back side here and this, that's what my thumb is on back here. And the one thing I will warn you about because I learned it the hard way is that the threading here on this screw is reverse thread. So if you try and go righty tighty less lefty loosey you're not going to have much luck. I find that one out the hard way. You don't need to know the details. <laughs> the blade comes out pretty easily. I'm going to go ahead and put the new blade in. The director of rotation is stamped on there or painted on there or however they get it on there. I'm not sure how. Go ahead and put the pressure plate in and the screw and forget to go righty tighty, go lefty tighty. Yeah, I know that's weird, but I imagine the reason it's that way is because if it was the other way, the blade would come flying off. It's really easy to put pressure down on the tightening because the shoe is on the, the workbench and gives me a good platform. Okay. All right, so now I've got a metal cutting blade in here. Now, they do specify soft metals, okay? So I'm not gonna even try steel. I'm gonna try a piece of aluminum. And while I'm at it, I've got a sound pressure meter here. I'm gonna go ahead and see how noisy this thing is. Cutting through aluminum tends to be rather noisy. Well, that seemed to go pretty good. Let's try something a little bigger. This is some, uh, looks like about two and a half inch tubing. It's about, the wall's maybe three thirty sixths of an inch thick, so this ought to be a good uh, challenge for the saw. Well, it didn't have any trouble doing that, and the maximum sound level we hit on the meter is 119.7 decibels. So yeah, I definitely recommend using your hearing protection. Then again, you're supposed to do that with a saw, circular saw anyway, right? So the other material they say you're supposed to be a cut on this is ceramic tile. Now, that one's a bit of a mind boggler for me, and, and let me tell you why, and that is because my ceramic tile, or saws for ceramic tile, usually have some sort of a, a water pump so that they're, they're putting water onto the uh, blade and the cutting surface while you're cutting. Obviously, there's no provision for that with this saw, but they did give us a diamond blade, and they say it's for ceramic cutting. So, okay, let's try it out. Blade change is really easy. The first time it was a problem for me, but I already told you about that with the trying to turn the screw the wrong way. So now we've got the ceramic blade in there. Gosh, if we only had a ceramic tile, right? This is a one foot square, quarter inch thick ceramic floor tile. Now I don't need this set for 25 millimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and change the depth. 10 millimeters should do enough. The other thing I think I want to do is put the fence back on here. You notice I'm putting it on from the other side. It is ambidextrous, so come on, go on either way, which is kind of nice. Now just help me make a straight cut. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I apparently let the uh, angle fall off a little bit when we got to the end because that last little bit didn't cut through, but boy, that went quick. That went a lot faster than I expected. Cut right through it. Nice, clean cut, too. So if you've got to do, a say, a bathroom floor or something like that, that's going to do the job for you. One little detail I've noticed about this saw that I want to tell you about, if you ever decide to buy one, is that there's, there's a track right here, and there's one on this side with uh, guide pins going into them. And you need to put a little oil there, okay? It didn't say that in the instructions, but it needs a little oil there. I was having a little trouble with it binding up, and then I just give it a little shot with WD-40, and that's all the problem. I imagine now that I've got it all dusty with the dust from the ceramic tile, I'm going to have to dust it out, and I'm going to have to oil it again. But, I mean, a little shot from the WD-40 is no big deal. So, basically, we've got a very, very capable tool here. No, it's not the tool you're going to use for framing a house. 
you're not going to cut two by fours you're not going to do any of that but there's a lot of things it can do it's made me rethink where a circular saw applies in the workshop and what you do with the circular saw so based on that rethinking i'd say this is a great idea i love the idea of having something that's lightweight and easy to maneuver there are enough projects I work on where I'm doing something overhead or down under in a crawl space or, or something else where it's awkward and it's difficult to get in there with a full-size circular saw or some other saw. This, there, there's a real place for a tool this size that will get into those sorts of places. And this one seems to be really well built. I'd say this is a win. I'd say this is something that is worth having in your workshop. And you know something? They're not all that expensive.